So it's finally official, Sako Kone to Manchester United, and he's been impressing the coaches. He's had his photos taken as a United player and more. There is a story coming out that Garnacho is getting fed up of Eric Tenog and offered himself to Barcelona. There is some interesting leaks coming out on that. I'm going to be honest, I think it's probably 99% BS trying to stir something up because United negativity gets clicks, but we will get into that story and my thoughts on it as we cover all news. And of course, we're going to have to go through the abundance of Ten Hag news. I'm kind of bored about talking about Ten Hag this, Ten Hag that, because I'm going to show you eight different media reports that have come out and how they, like, it's half of them contradict each other. Like, half are saying Tenog's gone, half are saying Tenog's staying, and all the guesswork. But we're going to get into the latest on Tenog because there has been an interesting story that's dropped about 10 minutes ago on why there was nothing announced last night and how something could be announced later this week and how they could fly out to contact Tenog and more. And then there's also other leaks and other stories. So please do hit the like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. And we're going to get into the first story, which is, look, it begins... Seku Kone is here. He's a Manchester United player. He's finally been pictured in a Manchester United kit. And honestly, I'm so happy we signed him. It's a surprise signing. It's an 18-year-old. He's not going to make an impact now. But from what I've read about this guy, he is the next big DM out there. He is someone that United would have not signed in the past and then regretted not signing. That's how he's sort of been described. He could even get some minutes towards the back end of the season, probably more so next year. This year is more of an adaption season, help him settle in to life in England, but he's so highly rated. And Manchester United this season have signed five, six, five wonder kids. LaSalle, 17-year-old 17, 17 right winger, can also play on the left. Obi Martin, 16-year-old striker. James Overy, 17-year-old right back. Saku Kone, 18-year-old DM. And Lenny Euro, 18-year-old centre-back. Now they're all official. Five wonder kids have come in. And according to some Man United sources, they will be an important part of the club's professional development phase. And one thing we know about Ineos, Ashworth, Wilcox is they're putting a big emphasis on youth and really building something for the future. Now, not all of these players are going to make it, but when you look at what we've got, Shea Lacey, Dangor, Bian Shiri, Harry Amas, Toby Collier, JC Fitzgerald, Amma Ibrahimov, just to name a few of the talent we've got coming through. On top of obviously Maynard and Garnacho recently, and then these guys, Nassau, Obi Martin, Overy, Kone, and Lenny Euro, who we can't wait for him to be back, is really exciting what we've got for the future. Even though the present isn't good, I think the future is in good hands. Romano said this first moments in a Manchester United shirt for Marley midfielder Seku Kone, who describes that as a dream. He said Man United completed the surprise move in August and coaching staff are already very happy with Kone's initial impact. He's really left coaches shocked by how good he is. It was said that Kone is already exciting United coaching staff at Carrington and Kone is on a fast track path to senior team and could be a figure in the United squad if they progress in the Carabao Cup. So people are that impressed by him already at the club. He could be a prominent figure. He could, not prominent, but he could get some min- minutes later in the season. He's really impressing the coaches and those inside Manchester United did his absolute brilliant ability. And if we go into this with more detail, Jason's Wilcox role is too close closely work with United first team, watching sessions and providing assistance to Tenag. He was also across the summer signings, Obi Martin and Kone. Christopher Viva was the driver behind the transfer of Kone. The player was known to Steve Brown, Man United had a scouting operations, but it felt that previous recruitment staff would be unable to execute a difficult deal. And what Laurie Whitwell was saying on the signing was, you know, United were aware of this guy. And United scouts are aware of so many good players. You know, the amount of times United scouts have said, this guy's a baller. Moises Caseda, let's get him. We don't get him. Julian Alvarez, let's get him. We don't get him. Benjamin Seskin is cheap. We don't get him. Erling Haaland, when he's cheap, we don't get him. The amount of times, like, people in and around United have said, oh, we should get this guy for four million. And then they end up being a hundred million player. Happens a lot. Now, I'm not saying that Kone is going to end up being a hundred million player. But what I'm saying is this report is suggesting that this is someone that United recruitment have liked. But the old recruitment scheme probably really wouldn't have done much to try and get the deal done. They probably wouldn't have pushed for it. Whereas the new recruitment scheme is kind of like, oh, this is one for the future. This is one we don't want to miss out on. This is the kind of deal we want to do. And I'm super excited about that. Now, I want to get into this report because I don't really think there's much truth to it. And I think international bait, people need some clicks. When when it's international bait, there's always a stir of negativity and dressing room leaks around United because I feel like there's just less to talk about. 
Um, but it has come out from a couple of sources in Spain that Alejandro Garnacho was fed up with life under Eric Tenag and he offers himself to Barcelona. Now, I think that Eric, Alejandro Garnacho is one of the players I have the least concerns about when it comes to work, right? I think he probably has frustrations because, you know, Man United aren't at their best, but I think he gives everything and gives 100% and does back the manager, in my opinion. But apparently he's fed up with life under Tenag and offered himself to Barcelona. According to reports from Spain, Garnacho is among a number of United players who are dissatisfied with the situation at Old Trafford and are considering a new environment. It's understood that Argentina's fed up with Tenag and has already offered himself to Barcelona, is what's being said. Now, I don't know if there's any truth to this. If there is any truth to this, it's a little bit sad. Um, but I think, for me, I think the media are thinking Garnacho not started every game. You know, it's not working under Tenog. They're not scoring goals. They're not getting the best out of Garnacho. He likes some tweets every now and then in the past. Um, I think people are, are writing a story that he's absolutely fed up. I don't think he's offered himself to Barcelona. I think he could look for a move in the summer if he feels that, you know, United aren't getting the best out of him. But I, I don't think he's someone that's causing problems. I think every United player is dissatisfied at the moment to some extent and not happy with what we're doing to some extent uh, because the football playing is bad. We've scored, we've scored five goals all season, particularly if you're an attacker, of course, you've got every right to be frustrated and dissatisfied. But I don't think he's going around messaging clubs saying, look, screw Ten Hag, I want to come here. Because, you know, the manager situation can, could change very soon and, and very quickly. And, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Guys, if you have not already, please do hit that like button. If you're still watching right now, you are six minutes into the video, so please do subscribe if you're new. I do 10-minute Manchester United news updates every morning and then every evening around half past five, six o'clock, I do a live show for about 30 to 40 minutes where I discuss the news with you guys and come out and sort of come up with, sorry, read out more news that's come out throughout the day. Now, the United Muppeteers have given an update on the Tenog situation and what they think is going on. The football structure, they said, wants to give Tenog more time and Sir Jim will leave the decision up to them. Now, we know that Sir Jim sort of felt enough is enough and he kind of wants Tenog gone. But at the end of the day, he's giving the decision to the football structure who want to give him more time. And he said, look, he, he's made it clear he won't stand in the way if they choose to sat Tenog. He's made it clear he probably doesn't want Tenog and he's made it clear something needs to change. But I think the football hierarchy is going to give Tenog more time, according to the Muppeteers. Um Things ten the Muppeteers said they think Tenog will get more time considering what would happen if they make a change. They said they are they'll be more proactively looking at contingencies, so replacements, and then he also prepared for how bad it was going to be, uh, is what they're sort of saying as well. But this is sort of pre-meeting information. What is the post-meeting information coming out? So if you didn't know there was a big meeting yesterday, it was one of those monthly plan meetings to discuss all things in general, but Tenog sacking, of course, would have been on the agenda. Man United are yet to clarify Eric Ten Hag's future following their executive meeting in London on Tuesday. There has been conflict whispers regarding Ten Hag's fate and a source said nothing should be read into the club's failure to communicate the outcome on Tuesday night. Now, I said, to be honest, if we don't find anything out Tuesday night after the meeting, that doesn't necessarily mean he's safe. The club would obviously fly out, meet Ten Hag in person, have a long conversation with Ten Hag in person. You know, they had a five hour conversation with Oli before they announced the sacking and then announced the sacking. So they could meet Ten Hag today and announce the sacking this evening. They could announce it tomorrow because Ten Hag is on holiday. They may wait for him to get back from holiday. It could be announced next week. I think the closer and closer we get to the Brentford game and there's no information that comes out, I think that means Ten Hag is safe. If we're sitting here this time next Wednesday and no information has come out, I think that's 99% sure Ten Hag is safe. I think if Ten Hag is sat, they'll probably tell us in the next three or four days. They might not tell us right away. They want to communicate that properly. I think they'll want to get moving quicker. But yeah, I think just because nothing came out last night doesn't mean he's safe. But I do think deep down the board want to give him more time. Now, we've had so many mixed reports about Tenong's future. And I think this just tells you the media doesn't really know anything because one source says one thing, another source says another thing. I think this is probably the, the prime example of do the media actually know anything or are they just looking to write a report because they know that it's just going to get clicks and interactions, even though they, they don't know much as well. Uh, but look... This is what's been said by Paul Hurst. Eric Tenag has not been told that his job is under threat. He's therefore planning to be in charge of the next game when United play Brentford. Um, I mean, he was told that before the FA Cup final, and I think they did plan to sack him after the FA Cup final. Uh, but yeah, then you've got Jessica Mira saying Eric Tenag is unsure if, he remains, if he's going to remain in charge of United. So one source is saying Eric Tenag thinks he's absolutely fine. The next source is saying, you know, Eric Tenag is absolutely unsure, you know, sure, blah, blah, blah. Very mixed reports. We then have another report saying no clarity has been offered regarding Eric Tenog's future at United following the summit meeting of the club's hierarchy during which the Dutchman's position as manager was discussed. Tenog could be sacked in the coming days. 
So some sources are saying Tenog's preparing for the next game. He's not worried. Other sources are saying he's worried. Some sources are saying he'd be sacked in the coming days. Miguel Delaney says, however, Ineos might feel there's no standout candidates to replace Tenog, and that's why they might be sticking with him. So as you can see, there's a lot of mixed reports. And then obviously international debate, you get the leaks saying that Tenog's rotation policy is puzzling some of his own players. Many of them prefer to keep playing and find their rhythm, which is fair, but I think more rotation means less injuries. But there's lots of mixed reports. There's lots of guesswork going around Tenog, and it is the international debate, so it is going to be full of a lot of nonsense. I will give you guys a warning about that. But look, I'll be back at 5pm, 6pm maybe, to debrief the nonsense, the stories, the news. If we do get any breaking news on Tenog's future, then I'll be back a lot earlier. I'll be back whenever that breaking news comes out. So make sure you're subscribe with the post notification bell. Thank you for watching. Bye.